Hey folks, welcome. My name is Emily and this is Gently Chaotic Knits, which is generally a video podcast series about what I have been making, mostly knitting. Um, sometimes I've been talking about a little bit about my spinning and um, some other crafting, a little bit of crochet, a little bit of sewing, just bits and bobs here and there. Uh, I am currently in Oklahoma with my pup Norman, who was hanging out on the bed here, but he decided to hop down on the floor over there. Uh, different location. <laughs> I think every single time I record this, it's a different location. I am currently sitting on the floor because I thought that's where I had the best light. I do have the overhead light on, but I also have a window. It's going to be a mix. We'll see how this goes. Um, but it has, of course, it's been a while since I last recorded. In case you're new or missed the update a while back, I am... My husband and I are traveling pretty much full-time during this time period, and so we're going on pretty lengthy trips. So I just take a second to record in between those trips. So today is March 12th, uh, 2024. And we just got back about a week and a half ago from a trip to Australia and New Zealand, which was incredible. And if you are curious more about our travels, I tend to not talk about them a ton here in this space. But if you're curious about our travels and want to know more about what we've been up to, I'll post a little bit about it on Instagram. But um, you can also sign up. We have a travel newsletter. And there's a link in... Um, in my website and I'll link it below here as well so that you can sign up if you're interested but otherwise it has been like I think six weeks or so since I last recorded I don't know what Norman is doing over there um, it's been like six weeks since I last recorded so there's lots to talk about I feel like this is gonna be a long one um, tons of acquisition. So I did make a rule for myself this year uh, that I would not buy any yarn unless it was on travel. Like when, you know, during our travels I am like allowing myself to buy yarn, but no kind of like online pre-orders or that kind of thing. And sorry, Norman came up. He, do you want to leave? One sec. He was hanging out with me before, but once I started talking to the camera, he was like, no, I'm out. I don't want this. <laughs> I interrupted his piece. Uh, anyway, what was I saying? Oh, since I kind of made that rule for myself, I, of course, like, I want to be able to purchase yarn and fiber and stuff on travels just because I don't know. I want to, I really like to get something special from where we visited. I don't know when I'll be back there. So if there's something that I really love, I want to be able to take that home with me as kind of like a souvenir. So um, I may have taken that a little bit overboard during this last trip. Um, there's a lot of like yarn, sheep and yarn and fiber culture in Australia and New Zealand. And so I definitely took advantage of that. So I've got lots of acquisitions to show and then I've got lots of knitting and stuff to show too. So let's go ahead and hop in. I have some finished objects to share with you. The first one I am wearing, I don't know if you noticed this, I'm, I feel like I'm a little closer to the camera than I normally am. So I don't know if you'll be able to see super well. Yeah, you can see it. This is my DRK Everyday Sweater, which is a pattern by Andrea Mowry. This is this sweater that I brought along as my primary project on this last trip. So I like to bring a sweater project um, because I feel like, especially for longer trips, that gives me a ton to work on. Uh, I did something a little different with this one as well. I actually kept track of how long it took me to make it. So every time I sat down to work on this sweater, I just like started a little stopwatch and then I added it all up together at the end. And I, the reason I did this, I just, I feel like I get lots of questions about how long does it take you to make a sweater? Um, and I never really know, like I'll say, oh, it takes me roughly a month, but that's like when I'm working on other stuff and you know, people don't really have a good sense for how long, how much I knit per day and that kind of thing. So I decided to actually track it. So I'd have like a number of hours and it turned out this sweater took me about 36 hours. Um, I did finish it like, kind of halfway through our trip, honestly. Um, 
And so luckily I brought like lots of other projects to work on so I didn't run out of knitting but that means I was able to wear it on the trip too. So anyway, let me take a step back and give you all the details. This is again the DRK Everyday Sweater by Andrea Mowry. I used Durerum Natura Ulysse which is a sport weight 100% wool. Um, the color weight is Poivre Blanc. Um, and it's a little bit warmer of a neutral than I normally wear, but I actually really like it. I was worried it'd be too close to my skin color, um, but I don't think it looks bad. I'm actually, I, I, I actually really like it. Uh, I knit the smallest size. I knit size one and I used a US 5 needle. I don't remember if that was the needle size that the pattern called for, and I don't, um, I didn't take finished measurements or anything. I don't remember if my gauge was super off or not. Um, the one modification I made, I have this huge fear of knitting yokes too short and then being like up in my armpit and uncomfortable. So I feel like my last several projects, I just keep knitting the yoke too long because I'm afraid of that. So I should have followed the pattern exactly. Andrea has like a spot where she says to sp split for the sleeves. I think she also mentions there like if you need a longer yoke or if your yoke's not long enough at this point you can add length here and I added I think about an inch of length from that point and I really wish I hadn't. I wish I had just listened to what she said because I feel like it is a little bit too deep. I think if it was just a touch higher up especially with it being closer fitting I would enjoy the fit better because I get a little bit of kind of like bunching here um and that is no fault of the pattern that is 100% my own fault because I just knit it too far I knit the yoke too far um I had a couple people tell me to um I guess not beware of but just like noticed in their own um versions of this pattern that the sleeves were a little tight and I do think that the sleeves are definitely on the tighter side. I do have no ease to maybe like very slightly negative ease on the sleeves. Um, I don't dislike that. I think the fit is really nice but if I did it again I think because the body I have a little more room I would maybe take a couple stitches on each side and move them from the body to the sleeves when I split for the sleeves just because I think that would make the balance a little bit better. Um, and then yeah, don't do the extra one inch in the yoke. I'm saying these things uh, about like what I would do next time because I'm very confident I'm gonna knit this sweater again. I really like the way that it fits. Um, and that's even with a couple of fit issues on my end, just on the way that I knit this one. So I definitely will be making this one again. I would love to try it in a different yarn. I'd love to try it in a different color. Um, yeah, I'm very confident I'm going to knit this one again. I think it's it was a pretty quick knit too. Like I said, 36 hours, which feels pretty short, kind of reasonable for a full garment, like for a sweater. So knowing that like just in 36 hours I could have another one of these, uh, I definitely feel like I want to make more. So let me take a sip. Hmm. And I think that's all the information I have about it. Um, I think it took me, yeah, I guess 36 hours, but I did that over like two to three weeks-ish, two and a half weeks maybe. So yeah, it felt really quick. Um, okay, other finished objects. Another one I have, and my things are kind of all over and I'm gonna be reaching around and <laughs> we'll see how this goes. Um, Another one I have, this I kind of spontaneously cast on before I left on my last trip and I wasn't able to finish it before we left but I have come back and finished it since then. Um, partially because I kind of want to take it on the next trip. So this is the Fern Collar by Knitting for Olive. And here's, I don't know, it's kind of, the collar part is kind of saggy. I don't know how best to show this. I mean, I'll put it on in a second, but here it is. This is what it looks like. So this is a pattern, like I said, by Knitting for Olive. Um, the yarn I used, I held two yarns together. The, um, the gray yarn is a sport weight alpaca from Cascade Rose Alpacas, which is an alpaca farm in Washington. And then I just had a mystery mohair in my stash. I honestly don't know where it came from in this kind of like light, warm, 
creamy pinky kind of color um, and I held those two together for the project the fern stitch pattern there are a whole bunch of fern patterns from knitting for all of there's like a fern sweater there's a fern collar there's a fern I think there's a fern tank there's all kinds of fern patterns and I'd always wanted to make one one I love this stitch pattern but also I am a sucker for like naming and inspiration and stuff and I love ferns I really love ferns so I knew I wanted to make one of the patterns and I thought the collar would be a good place to start I don't know the sweater is like I don't the lace pattern is so beautiful I just feel like it's a touch fancy for me I don't know if that makes sense I just I'm not I feel like I'm not a fancy person I don't have a lot of occasions to wear like fancy clothes so anyway I'll put it on so you guys can see it's basically just like the yoke of a sweater so um yeah there it is and the point for this the reason that I wanted to knit this um I felt like it would be really convenient for travel because um especially if we're going somewhere that's a little bit chilly I didn't want to have to bring like large shawls or scarves or wraps in our luggage because we have limited luggage space especially if I'm gonna buy a lot of yarn so I wanted something that would still serve that purpose of keeping my like head and neck and chest cozy and warm without taking up a ton of luggage space and I feel like this will work perfectly for that so um there are multiple sizes in the pattern this is not any of them so the pattern actually I believe calls for like a worsted weight and a lace weight held together so I think like an Aran weight um and this is not that I don't know why in my head I just like was set on using this yarn I could have found like other yarn in my stash that would be closer to the gauge but I was like I want to use this so I ended up basically just casting on more stitches you knit this from the top down like from the collar down so I just like cast on more stitches I did a little bit of math like I started um did I knit a swatch I guess I maybe knit like just a little bit of a swatch um to get an idea how off my gauge was gonna be and then I did a little bit of math to figure out like how many more stitches I needed to cast on and then you end up basically just like doing more repeats of this lace panel um and it worked out just fine I feel like it fits and everything is good I kind of like it with this sweater I don't know it's like a cool neutral and a warm this is kind of warm because of the mohair anyway I will probably bring this on my next trip I feel like it'll be really great to just like tuck under my coat um and keep myself nice and warm and also I like that it has the turtleneck that I can pull up if I need to for like my my neck and like under my hair and stuff I can pull it up I wish it stayed up a touch better but yeah it'll keep me nice and cozy I can pull it up and with a beanie on too it's basically like a balaclava <laughs> like I'll be nice and toasty in there so yeah I, I think it's cute I'm I don't know I'm happy with it so that is my fern collar next I think I don't it's hard for me to remember exactly where I was on all these projects when I last recorded um, but I did finish two pairs of socks that I wanted to show y'all so last time I was in the middle of just like so many socks and I was like ready to finish them so I finished two pairs I did block them but I've worn one of them since then or like I wore it yesterday excuse me so it's not as nice and clean looking but I guess I could have got one of my sock blockers to show but can't be bothered now um okay I finished my Christmas socks so these were my Christmas Eve cast on um my friend Maya and I have done this the last two years now where on Christmas Eve we did a little self-striping Christmas sock yarn cast on so what we actually did is because we did contrasting heels and toes and I think I did contrasting cuffs last year. Um, 
we had enough yarn to actually split the skein in half and so we each did like different colorways last year and then we swapped our leftovers I think that made sense hopefully so anyway this yarn is nomadic yarns scum buddy loves Christmas uh, the base I believe is Brit sock which I think is a BFL nylon and so this is the colorway that Maya used for her socks last year so now we have two pairs of matching socks because she used this year the ones I used last year so anyway I finished these um, for the heels and toes I just used this was like a little mini that I think I had like thrown in for free in an order at some point I'm pretty sure it's lichen and lace um, sock yarn I think the colorway is shrub but I thought it went well with these colors and I also thought that I would be unlikely to use this um another time because these are generally like that kind of mucky green is not generally a color that I gravitate toward but I thought it went really well with the socks so I did just a basic ribbed sock I did an after a true afterthought heel um and I I think I did 60 stitches they may if anything, I think they're maybe a tiny bit snug, honestly. Um, I may need to size up my needle or I may need to go to 64 stitch socks now, I guess, um, which is wild. My, uh, I think I talked about this in a recent episode that I kind of made a change to the way that I knit that makes me knit a little bit tighter, which I think is altogether a great thing but it's kind of weird for me now like I don't know I used to have to do 56 stitch socks and they were still too big so I will figure it out I will figure out what my perfect sock needle and sock stitch number is 60 could be good I feel like it's actually decent so anyway um I did have a little bit of trouble when knitting these socks because I was, I knit the first one and I was weighing as I went to try to make sure that I left exactly half uh, or like close to half of the yarn for the second sock and I thought I had left enough but because I like was kind of in between a stripe and I needed to start at the right point in a stripe and I don't know anyway because of that I ended up just a little bit short on the second one and I had already put the toe in in the first one so what I ended up doing is just going back ripping out the toe and ripping out like one or two stripes until it got to the same length as the second one um and then I just put the toe back in both socks so I just did not do a good job of weighing my yarn and making sure that I had enough for each of them but that's okay that happens um but anyway I finished these and I have washed and blocked them and woven the ends in and then the other pair that I finished is these just basic vanilla socks I did I did kind of follow the DRK everyday sock pattern so that's the heel that I put in here but that is a ripped sock and I just didn't do the ribbing um so I just did like a basic kind of vanilla sock the yarn here is um stress knits favorite the colorway is in my hometown and that is from her 2022 advent this was the final day skein i think um and i knit the size seven of the drk everyday which is the again like the 60 stitch size and also used a us size zero needle i actually think these fit pretty well the cast on on the leg is a touch tight i don't like the way that the stretchy cast ons look if i'm being honest and so i never do them um and it's a little tight on this one it's a little bit tricky to get these socks on and off but otherwise i feel like they fit i think i made them a touch long in the foot actually and i that's a problem with another sock that i am almost done with I don't know if just like when I'm trying it on I'm really like it's kind of bunched up or something I'm not sure but I am knitting my socks a little bit too long in the foot so I really need to get this figured out I've knit enough socks in my life that I should be I should have it figured out I should be able to knit socks that fit m my feet very well and I just still have not gotten that down perfectly so that's okay still there's lots of socks left in it and I will get it figured out and it will not be a problem but anyway that is my last finished object 
Um, I knit the second one of these socks on the last trip. I brought it with me. It was a great travel sock, just basic vanilla sock. And I really love this colorway. I feel like it's really very pretty and subtle. And I honestly haven't been knitting with variegated yarn very much. And so it's fun to knit with variegated yarn and get those little pops of color and like little bits as you're knitting along. Um, I pretty much will only knit with variegated yarn for socks now. So very fun for socks though. Um, yeah, so that is my, those are all my finished objects. I do have a couple of half finished objects that I can share. Um, so just basically socks, more socks that I finished one of. So the first one, this one is, actually I'll show this one first. So this is another pair of socks that was in my pile of socks that I was hoping to finish that I had in progress last time. This is the Little Black Sock by Summerly Knits and I started this back last fall. It's very much like a fall colorway I feel like. This is the colorway Ghost Town from Magpie Fibers. It's their swanky sock base and I have to say I think this is maybe my favorite sock yarn base of all time. I love the way that it knits up. I love the way that it feels. I loved knitting with it. Um, yeah, Swanky Sock from, from Magpie Fibers. And the reason for that, of course, that it feels so good is it does have a little bit of cashmere in it. So it's a wool, cashmere, nylon blend, I believe. I don't remember how much of each of those things. Um, but anyway, I finished the first sock except for the heel. It is like a, it's an afterthought heel. So I'd finished the first sock before our trip and then we got back and I decided that I was going to try to knit the second sock before we leave for this next trip and I did finish the second sock and then I put in the heel on the first sock last night and then I'm hoping today I can put in the second heel and then these will be completely done. I love this pattern as well. Um, this is like I said, the Little Black Socks by Summerly Knits, and I definitely want to knit more of this pattern. I really like it. I think the fit is good too. I Again, I think I knit the foot too long. I need to not knit it so long, but I did uh, size one for this, so the smallest size, which I believe is a 60 stitch sock as well, and used a US size zero needle. Um, it's a little snug as well, but I think that when you wear socks, they kind of relax. So I actually think this is the right size. I think 60 stitches is actually the right size for me. And I just love the way this cable looks down the side. Here's one on both sides. So yeah, and they feel really good. And I like this length too. I've been really into socks that are not quite as long, that are just like little not short socks not long socks but like in the middle I don't know I like that length so I also was kind of like when I was knitting the ribbing on this sock I was like I kind of really like two by one ribbing for the top of socks I feel like I always do two by two or one by one and I really like two by one ribbing so anyway that is one half finished object nearly finished but I just need to put the one you can see my waist yarn in here I need to put the afterthought heel in and then I will be done with these socks as well and then another half finished object I finished another sock um, this one I knit primarily on our trip uh, because this yarn was inspired by New Zealand and I wanted to knit it while I was in New Zealand. So this yarn is Paisley Knits. It's the Coastal Sock Set, which I believe is their Superwash yarn, sock yarn. Um, it is just like a merino nylon Superwash yarn, sock yarn. Uh, the colorway is Fjordland National Park and the contrast color is Milford Sound. And we went both of those places. Unfortunately, Ah, the one kind of hiccup that we had on this trip was that our bag was delayed when we flew from Australia to New Zealand. And so our first place that we went to in New Zealand, or we had, we, okay, sorry, we, we checked two suitcases and one of them was delayed. 
uh, and we don't know what happened. It seems like there was a whole bunch of other people on our flight as well that didn't have their bags, like that they didn't show up. And so it seems like they just missed a cart and they just like didn't load it onto the plane because our other bag made it like no problem. But anyway, super weird. Our bag didn't make it. And this yarn was, I'd actually started the sock as well. And it was in the bag that didn't make it. And the first place we went in New Zealand was Fjordland National Park. And so we weren't able to get our bag back until a few days later. And by that point we were already gone from the national park and I was so bummed because I wasn't able to knit these socks in the place that inspired them and I was so sad about that um it's okay it's not a big deal I knit these socks in lots of other gorgeous places in New Zealand it's not that big of a deal but anyway that was kind of a huge bummer but the yarn is gorgeous, absolutely beautiful. I really enjoyed working on these. And then the pattern, I didn't follow a pattern. I had seen a lot of these kind of like camp style socks with the two stripes on the top. And so I wanted to do something like that. So I just, I, this is a 60 stitch sock again. I just did a one by one ribbing for a while. And then I did two contrast stripes. And then, yeah, I did top down. I did a little heel flap and gusset, um, like a slip stitch heel. And then I just did a contrast toe as well so just kind of did my own thing I think there is a pattern it may be called the camp socks which is pretty similar that has like this these stripes so you can try to find that if you want to follow a pattern otherwise you can just follow like a vanilla sock pattern and just put two stripes in and make the toe a different color and it will look like this um, and I thought it was cute. So yeah, I finished the first one and I have not cast on the second one yet. And I probably won't knit the second one for a while. I don't like leaving my socks. Like I don't like the whole second sock syndrome thing. I don't like leaving my socks unmatched. But I, yeah, it's probably going to be a while before I knit the second one. I just have other socks to knit. So that is, yeah, that is my half finished objects. I do have another, I have another kind of finished object that maybe now I will talk about. So I think I mentioned on the podcast before, my friend Maya and I are doing a sweater swap. So basically uh, we were knitting the Aurelia pullover together and, um, she had like a little bit of a health issue, like a little soreness in her elbow from an injury and um, found that knitting cables specifically were like kind of irritating that for her. And so um, we had the idea to do like a little bit of a sweater swap. So I said I will knit both of our Aurelias because I like knitting cables. I don't mind knitting cables. It doesn't hurt me. It's not a problem. And those of you that have been following for a while may notice and also have heard me say that I don't like knitting color work. I almost never knit color work. I've only done it a couple of times and when I did it, I didn't love it. So I'm not a big color work knitter, but Maya is. She doesn't mind knitting color work. And so we did a little swap where I will knit both of our cabled sweaters. So we'll have matching cable sweaters and she will knit both of our color work sweaters. So we'll have matching color work sweaters and she finished knitting my sweater and she sent it to me. So I wanted to show you all because it's beautiful and I can't believe this and I'm getting, oh my gosh, you all, <sighs> I'm so emotional about this. This is just like the coolest and best thing and to have a hand knit sweater that someone else made for me is like the ultimate gift. I know that I have tons of hand knit sweaters but to have one that someone else, like I know the time and the energy that it takes to make a hand knit sweater. I understand the effort and Maya and I were in communication about it the whole time. Like she was checking with me all the time. She even like ripped back a whole section because we were worried about the fit and like she just went to such great lengths to make this sweater perfect for me and I just that really gets me. I don't know. Like, that's so sweet. And I just can't believe it. So anyway, um, I have this sweater now. Oh my God, you guys look at how gorgeous it is. Holy cow. It's stunning. <laughs> it's seriously so pretty. And like, yes, I have lots of hand knit sweaters. 
I don't have a single long sleeved color work sweater, not one, because I don't like knitting color work. And so to have this, that I get to have this beautiful color work sweater, I don't know if that's backwards, I think it's backwards, but I get to have this beautiful color work sweater and I didn't even have to make it. Y'all, this is just the best, this is the best thing. And it makes me so excited to knit. Maya sweater too. <sighs> anyway, this is the Lume Pullover by Sari Nordland. It is slightly modified, so um, we were a little bit worried that the yoke was too deep. So Maya actually removed one of the color work motifs. So in the pattern, there's generally a, another kind of like color work motif here in between this big flower section and the bottom one but that has been actually I guess can you see it on the sleeves I don't know I can't remember which part got removed but anyway um so we did that and then otherwise I think it's to pattern I don't remember Maya I'm sure she told me I don't remember what needle size she used this is I believe the second size of the pattern and um, I guess I'll just toss it on on top of my other sweater it is a little bit looser fitting than this one so I think I can just toss it on on top and our next trip we're going to Scotland and Ireland and I feel like this is the perfect sweater to wear there so and Maya made sure to get it to me before we leave on our trip which is very sweet as well so yeah, it fits great. Um, I'm always nervous about circular yoke sweaters because, I mean, I've had success. I guess the DRK Everyday is a, a circular yoke as well, but I'm always nervous that they're not going to fit great. But this one fits perfectly. It's amazing. The color is beautiful. And look at the sleeves. Y'all, this is just wild that another person made this for me I can't believe it I really can't it's so beautiful <sighs> it's my favorite I love it so much so that is my Lume pullover I don't know if there's anything else I have to say about it other than I'm just obsessed oh the yarn I can tell you the yarn um this is knitting for olive heavy merino and the main color is dark ochre and the contrast is midnight, I believe. And for Maya's sweater that she is knitting for herself, she's going to do these colors swapped. So her main color will be midnight and her contrast color will be the dark ochre, which I also think will be beautiful. So yeah, anyway, I will take this off because two sweaters is too much for right now. Um, <laughs> but, ugh. I just look at this and I think about how much time and effort and like, and I didn't have to make it myself. My friend, my lovely friend made this for me. Ah! Anyway, um, I'm obsessed with it and I love it so much. So that is my Lume pullover. And yeah, maybe let's talk now about so it's time to talk about whips, works in progress, and I'll just go ahead and talk about the sweater that I am knitting for Maya. So she actually started this one. Um, we had started them together and then kind of realized that it was irritating her. So she sent me what she did and then, so here it is. And you only remember, I can actually pull mine off so you can see it off my shelf. This is my Aurelia pullover that I finished a couple months ago. So it's this beautiful, cabled, incredible sweater. Um, it's a raglan. It has just a wonderful cable pattern to it. And honestly, I kind of enjoyed knitting it. Like, I know it seems intense and there's like a lot of cables, but I really did enjoy knitting this one. So anyway, this is my Aurelia and Maya's is in this gorgeous like blue greeny color. Um, 
The yarn is La Bien Aimee Merino DK, I believe, in the colorway Emmeline. And so, yeah, she got partway through the yoke. So I am going to pick up from here and finish it up. So what I have done, I haven't picked up yet. Um, I am planning on taking this one on my next trip. So hopefully I can finish it on the trip. But I did knit a little swatch. So here's my swatch. This I, um, since I'm picking up where Maya left off, I wanted to make sure that I could match her gauge because I really want... I. I need to match her gauge because I'm going from where she left off. So, um, so yeah, I, what I did is I just knit basically this center cable, this full cable repeat. I did one cable repeat in, um, in my swatch. And then I just kind of held that up to make sure I wanted to actually not block the swatch because this is not blocked. So I wanted to compare the unblocked and the unblocked. So I, knit the swatch and then just compared kind of laid it over and I think I have the gauge pretty much spot on um I did have to change my needle size from what I did for mine to match Maya's gauge because she is a little bit of a tighter knitter than I am even after I made the change to the way that I knit she's still a little bit of a tighter knitter than me so um I believe she was knitting this on a US 7 which is what the pattern calls for and that's what I did for this one but I had to switch to a 6 to get the same gauge that she has so um yeah, so I have, and also look at this cute bag that Maya sent me that, well, this is her bag, but she sent her project in. I just wanted to show this really cute quilted bag that Maya made. Very cute. Um, and has all of the gorgeous yarn in it. Like, look at this color. I don't know how good the light is and like how well y'all are able to see this, but I fight with my family members and also I think just like everyone about this. I would consider this a blue. And I think most other people would consider it a green. Uh, I think Maya considers this a green, but in my head, this is a blue. So what do y'all think? Blue or green? I think it's blue. I think it's blue-green, but I think it's blue. More blue than green. But maybe I'm wild. Maybe that's, maybe that's not a good opinion of mine. But anyway, um... That is Aurelia. I am both for this one and for the one I previously knit. I'm doing size two. And I already talked about the yarn and the needle size. Um, but yeah, I just need to get this off the waist yarn and back on the needles. And I'll probably try to do that tonight or tomorrow so that it's ready to go for travel. So yeah, um, there's kind of yarn everywhere. Let me just shove this all back. Other works in progress. So I do have another garment work in progress. This one I actually brought with me on my last trip um, and I just started it, but I didn't get a ton done on it. So I am actually knitting another um, color tip tee. This is a pattern of mine that came out last year and um, I really love. And I have a basic gray version that I wear all the time. And so I actually wanted to knit another one, but knit it long sleeves, sleeved. So I am knitting a second colored, well, I guess the third, cause I already have two, but I'm knitting a third color tip tee, but this one I am knitting with long sleeves. So I barely just started this. The yarn I'm using is actually the same yarn as my gray one in a different color, of course, but this is Grenoui Co in the sock linen base. It's a single ply yarn with, I think it's 90% merino, 10% linen or something like that. There's only a little bit of linen in it. And the colorway is Inky Depths. So it's really pretty. Um, and I am actually using a US size three needle for this. When I knit my previous two color tip tees, I used a two and a half needle because I was still a little bit of a looser knitter then, but now that I've kind of adjusted how I knit a bit, I decided to go ahead and just do it on a US 3. I did not swatch, but I was like, it'll turn out. I'll be fine. So that is my color tip tee. Is there anything else I need to say about this? I am planning to take this one on the next trip too. I will bring Aurelia, but 
if there are times when I don't want to be working on cables or I am also expecting to finish Aurelia on this trip and I want to have another garment pattern ready to go as well or garment project rather so I will bring this one on the next trip as well um okay one other work in progress this is one that I got a lot of work on during our trip I took this one with me this is my crosshatch wrap so I think last episode I had shown you because I had started this um but I had an issue with the I-cord on the side being too tight anyway here I'll show it to you first and then I'll start talking about it but this is you're not going to be able to tell <laughs> the full length here I can do it sideways so this is the crosshatch wrap it's a two color brioche so the two sides are different so I'm using like a dark gray and a cream. So there's like, this is the dark gray side, dark gray main color side, and this is the white main color side. Um, here, I'll just put it like that. This is gonna be nice when it's done. Um, okay, this is a pretty heavily modified crosshatch wrap, which is a pattern by Jared Flood from Br Brooklyn Tweed. Um, I did not like the edging options that they had in the pattern, and so I decided to do an applied I-cord edge instead in just one of my colors, but I, when I was doing that, I realized that it was just a little bit too tight, and so I had to do extra I-cord rows, and now it's working out great. It's not, like, it's nice and stretchy on the side, it's not too tight, I feel like it worked out really well. So I did, after last time, I did actually start over, but I'm glad that I did, because I feel like it, yeah, it's just a lot better now. Um, the yarns I'm using, the gray is Durham Natura Gilead in the colorway Fusain, and the cream is from Spinaway Farms. I got this at um, New York Sheep and Wolf is Festival last year, uh, and it's just their natural, like, bare um, Italian merino, is what it said, and it's really nice and soft. I really like the way that the cream feels, so it's actually a, the pattern calls for a, like, a worsted weight and a, I mean, the pattern uses Brooklyn Tweed, um, and I don't, I always forget the names of the Brooklyn Tweed bases I guess is it this keeps I feel like this keeps rotating sorry <laughs> um the is it still like it's just slowly rotating <laughs> I feel like it is stay I don't know we'll see um what was I saying I think it's loft is one of them and shelter is the other is that true? Maybe. Um, but I don't remember which one is which. But yeah, so for me, I think um, the gray is like a worse weight. It's, yeah, it's, it's a worse weight yarn. And the cream is like a fingering or a sport weight. I don't remember which one. So that is something about this too, that it uses different yarn weights. I think you could use the same. I think you could do whatever you wanted. This is basically just like a big two color brioche rectangle like you can this is easy to figure out you can do whatever you want um I what was I gonna say I feel like I had more to say about this but I don't I haven't I I lost it I guess um but yeah I pretty much exclusively worked on this on the trip I, it's probably like three feet long and I'm gonna go until maybe seven feet at least if not longer or until I run out of yarn. I really was hoping that I would finish my first skein of the cream yarn before coming back and I did not. This is the first skein of the cream yarn. I finished my first skein of the gray yarn. I'm on my second but yeah, I'm not taking this on the next trip. It's just like, it's too big. Once it gets to the size, this like, this is all already knit and that's just space it's taking up. So I can't take it 
on the next trip. So it'll be a while until I finish it. It won't be until I'm back um, that I'm working on it again. But yeah, that's it. That's it for works in progress. That is all I think. Am I missing anything? I think that's all I have for my knitting. I do have some spinning to share. Y'all, I don't know about this. I don't know about this. Okay, I'm gonna show it to you and then we'll just see. So I have been spinning for the Traveler Shawl, which there's actually a Spin It to Knit It knit along that Andrew Mowry and Chaplin Mercery are putting together. Um, so I am happy to be participating in that. I picked three braids from my stash to do a combo spin for the Traveler Shawl. I don't have the fiber anymore because I've already spun it, but um, it was two Nest Fiber Clubs, uh, the February and March clubs from last year. The colorways were called Cabin Fever and Spring Ahead. And then I also have a Supernova braid, which I don't remember the color we made, and I think it may be... Sorry, I'm getting something from under my bed. Um, the colorway is hollow there. And it is... This was my first time spinning Superwash Merino, and it was a trick at the beginning, but then it ended up being fine. Anyway, I basically just spun each th of those three separately and then I've been plying them together and I finished my first skein last night. I'm gonna show it to you and I'm not gonna say anything at first and then I'll tell you what I think. Here it is. This is what it looks like. So, yeah, this is the first skein. I'm curious, I'd love to hear y'all's opinions about this. Do we like this? Because when I was plying it, I was like, I don't know about it. Then I finished, and I pulled it off of the bobbin. I was like, yes, I love it. And then, like, an hour later, I was looking at it again, and I was like, I don't actually know if I like this. I don't know. So, okay, all three braids had this kind of like periwinkle blue color in them, and you can tell because it's like, that's definitely present. But each of them was kind of like different. Like there was one that had the periwinkle, but it also had like teals and browns in it. There was another that had the periwinkle in it, but it's mostly like pinks and oranges. And then the third one has the periwinkle in it, but it was mostly like white and like neon green and other stuff in it and so the periwinkle kind of ties them all together but some of the other stuff in each of the braids just like I don't think goes together super well and the way that I spun this is I just spun each one end to end so I think if I'd made it a little bit more blendy it maybe would have worked out better, but here, let me undo the skein and show you. I have not washed this yet, so it's still gonna like twist up on itself a little bit, but. Um, but you can tell that there are like really long color repeats here, like really long stripes, because I just spun each one end to end and then I spun them together. And I'm wondering if I had done, like separated each braid a little more, if it would have been more blendy and it would have been better. But also like a lot of it overall, if I kind of look at it, I'm like, oh, this is nice. But then if I look close up, I'm like, this is supposed to be kind of like a fun holographic rainbow. But then there's like this yellow brown section, which like I'm not opposed to yellow brown, but I don't know if that works in this. I just don't know. So, yeah, I'm undecided. I'm really undecided, but I'm gonna finish it. I'm, I mean, of course I'm gonna finish it. I have two more skeins to ply. I'm in the middle of plying my second skein. Also, I'm gonna be honest, I feel like I did a decent job on this spin, but 
I kind of feel like by now I should be really consistent. And there are still little bits that are like pretty thin and bits that are thicker. Like you can tell this is like a, one of my singles is like pretty thick here. And I just feel like I should be past that. I don't know. I'm wishing that this is a touch more consistent. It's like pretty good. I mean, I'm not gonna have any trouble when I'm knitting it, but. Anyway, I think it's like a DK weight. My plan was to knit the traveler shawl with this. And I don't know. There's part of me that wants to start over and spin something else. Also, I don't wear shawls that much. So what if I spun something else and I knit a traveler crew neck or something? I'm also nervous I'm not gonna have enough yarn for this. I could knit the traveler cowl out of this. Maybe, I, I mean, I don't, since I don't wear shawls that much, I think this will be fun to knit. So I'm like, if I, even if I don't like the shawl, who cares? Cause I don't really wear shawls. Or I could knit the shawl and I could give it away as a gift. That would be fine. I don't know. I'm not sure about this, so I don't know. I mean, y'all tell me what you think. Also, like, try to be a little bit nice. Like, don't tell me, Emily, how could you have ever thought that that would look good? But you can say, like, uh, I was asking my friends this morning, do we think this is more fun holographic rainbow? Or do we think this is, like, rainbow baby blanket? Those are, like, the... <laughs> That's kind of what I'm wondering because at its best, I feel like it's kind of a fun holographic type thing. And at its worst, I feel like it's like a mismatch of weird stuff. And kind of like baby. Because it's like kind of pastel-y and it's kind of rainbowy. Anyway, I need I don't need to talk about this anymore. I spun this. And I have mixed feelings about it. And that's just how it goes sometimes. So anyway, um, I will talk about spinning the Superwash Merino. That was new to me. I was really nervous. At the beginning, it was definitely slipping on me. But it's so cool how with practice and just like continuing through the braid, I eventually got the hang of it and like didn't have any trouble. So like toward the end, it was just like spinning anything else. So that was kind of cool. Now I know I can spin Superwash Merino. Um, I don't know, I feel like for my next spin, I'm just ready for something. I'm ready for a win, I think. I was originally, I actually got, I'll show in a second, I got some Rolags from my friend Bridget, and I was thinking, oh, I'm gonna spin those, and I'm gonna practice long draw, and that'll be really fun, because I've, I've never tried long draw before. I mean, I've tried it for like two seconds, but, um, but I kind of feel like after this, I kind of want something that I, like, I want a quick win, I guess. I want something that I know is going to go well and that I can be proud of and I can feel good about. So I'm kind of thinking about doing a sock spin. I have a couple of braids of fiber from Union Fiber that are for socks. And so I'm thinking about doing one of those and hopefully having like a quick, a quick win. Um, and also I really want more hand spun socks, so. But I only spin when I'm back home in between trips anyway, and it won't be a while until I'm back, so I don't have to decide right now, but that's kind of what I'm thinking. I'm a little bit bummed by how this turned out, but I'm also, like it's fine. It's just not. Anyway, I've talked about this enough. That's my spinning. Now I really need to get into the acquisitions because we're an hour in and I haven't started the acquisitions and that is a hefty chunk of what I have to talk about because I have a lot of acquisitions. So let me take a sip and then we'll get started. So, okay. Here's my bag. <laughs> Of acquisitions. <laughs> oh my gosh, you guys. So 
basically on this trip, this bag, this like thin sunflower bag, um, we just kind of stick it in our, like in our backpacks every time we travel and then we, because it's, it, it folds up like really small, I don't know if y'all have seen those bags before, but like you can fold it up. And it, um, we'll use it as like a grocery bag if we have to go get groceries, we'll use it, all kinds of things. Basically what it turned out to be on this trip was, um, filled with yarn fiber for me to bring home <laughs> because it wouldn't fit in our suitcases. So we basically just packed this bag and took it as an additional carry-on to get home. And um, I'll probably end up doing that on the next trip too, but it is full of goodies. This top one is actually not from um, my travel, so I will share it first. So this is actually the Rolex I was just talking about that my friend Bridget sent me. Look at how pretty they are. So there are kind of like two different types in here. There's like this really pretty blue. Bridget knows that I love blue. Everyone knows I love blue. I love blue. So this is perfect for me. I love it. And then there's also this one that's like got a little bit more um, like variation in it. And so pretty. So... Um, Bridget said her kind of intent when she sent them to me was for them to be like plying partners. So I'll probably do like, yeah, one bobbin of this like bluey, like more plain blue one and then one bobbin of the more varied one. Um, and then because this is like a woolen prep, I think I'll try doing long draw with this, but I'm nervous. I don't know. I'm scared. If anyone has resources on how to learn to spin long draw, please let me know. Send those my way. I have been watching some videos on it and my friend Maya tried to show me um, briefly and I just, I'm scared. But I think I can do it. I just, I think this will be a good opportunity to practice. It's not so much fiber, so I'll get like a quick little project in. And yeah, so huge thank you to Bridget for sending these to me. They're gorgeous. And I can't wait to spin them, although I am scared. <laughs> but definitely in the next like, couple projects, I'm going to get this one on the wheel because I do want to try long draw. So that is my first acquisition. And then I actually have another one that's not for my travels. Actually, you know what? I'm actually not going to share this because it's for a gift and I'm gonna keep it a secret, so I'll show it another time, but let me pull that out sneakily. Um, okay, anyway, I'm gonna try to go chronologically, because that way I can kind of give you all an idea of like where we went and what order we went in. I'm not gonna talk about the travels a ton, but I'm gonna try to go chronologically. So we started out, we actually went to, I got to meet up with some San Francisco knitting pals, uh, because we were in San Francisco for a few days before heading to Australia. We were visiting friends and there, and then also just like our flight to Sydney was direct from San Francisco. So I got to meet up with some San Francisco knitting pals and got to go to a couple of shops there. I didn't end up buying anything in San Francisco, I think because like we hadn't even left for Australia yet. I was like, I cannot use this space in my suitcase. Um, but that was super fun. Um, and then we flew to Sydney. We were in Sydney for a few days and we went to Tasmania, um, which is just like an island off of the coast of Australia. And we were there for about a week and um, I did go to a yarn store in Sydney, but I didn't end up buying anything there either. I went to Skein Sisters there um, and just like they had some really beautiful things, but I just didn't find anything that I felt like I really had to have. Um, I don't think I went to any yarn stores in Tasmania. I don't even know if there are any or if I found any, but I don't believe I went to any. But then we went back to mainland and we went to Melbourne and we did the Great Ocean Road. And we, um, in Melbourne, we went to Maker Maker, which was a beautiful yarn store that was recommended to me by lots of folks. Um, and I did get a couple things there. So let's start there. The first thing I got there is, oh, this has come a little bit undone. I got these three skeins of beautiful Surrey. So this is 
black wattle yarn and fiber which is an australian yarn dyer this is a surrey alpaca silk blend and it feels so great and i've just been so into this color i mean this was the hope that I had for my hand spun skein, which I don't know where I put it. Oh, this was like kind of the hope that I had. And so you kind of can see that a little bit, but um, this is more kind of on the blue side, I guess. But I've been really into this color. I feel like it, I just got fluff on my tongue. Um, I've been really into this color and I hadn't bought anything that was this color yet, but I just have been admiring it. And so when I saw this, I was like, I really have to this so I don't know what I'll use this for probably a sweater of some kind but I'll probably get another um another yarn to hold with it I actually just saw I think the wandering flock came out with a colorway that is similar to this so maybe when I'm ready I will get that at some point I feel like this fluff is really getting me um I mean it's an entire bag of fluff so yeah the colorway is called coolness I think it's cute too and yeah so that I got from Maker Maker and then the other thing I got from Maker Maker is let me see if I can find it um yes so I got a few balls of this yarn called Wooly it's actually a New Zealand wool so here's the little logo it's called Wooly and um, this was actually inspired by when we were outside of the Sydney Opera House. We were in the, I think it was the Sydney Botanic Garden. I saw this woman walk by and she was wearing a really cute like tank vest type thing that was like granny squares and I was like, I want to make one of those. Um, I'm not super proficient at crochet so I, we'll see how this goes, but I got um, three balls of this color to be the main color. This is the colorway sheepish and then I got one each of these three colors well okay y'all guess before I hold it up have in your mind what three colors do you think I picked and then I'll hold it up in three two one yeah predictable am I um a rusty red a uh, blue and a mustard those are the three colors that I picked I feel like this is very me um and so I'm gonna just make a whole bunch of granny squares and then I'm gonna try to seam them together into like a tank top I don't know I don't know if I got enough yarn don't know I don't know <laughs> I'm not sure but we'll see how this goes um so I grabbed that and the yarn feels pretty good too. It's a non superwash wool. Um, and I think it's like a roughly like a DK weight or maybe a worsted. Don't know. So I got that. So that is what I got from Maker Maker in Melbourne. Then we flew to New Zealand and that is really where I did the damage. I got a lot of yarn and fiber from New Zealand. Um, yeah, got lots of goodies in here. So um, first we went to, well, we went to like Fjordland National Park. Um, there was actually like a craft store there and they were selling like a little bit of yarn, but there wasn't anything that was really calling to me. But they did have this really sweet thing outside of the shop. They had a little chair there with a community project that said like sit and knit a few rows or whatever. So I got to add a couple rows to the community project, which was really sweet. Um, I'll try to put a picture up of me knitting there. That was really nice. That was in the town of Teanau, um, New Zealand. Uh, yeah, and then we went back up to Queenstown picked up our bag that was lost um and then went to Wanaka and I went to a couple of yarn stores in Wanaka that were really cool um one of them was called Wools of Wanaka and this is the first possum yarn that I bought so many of you recommended this to me but if you haven't heard of this let me explain it in New Zealand they produce yarn made from the fiber of the brush tail possum so if you are in the states like if you're in america this possum is not the same as what you are thinking of as a possum um, it is cuter and fluffier 
but it's also an invasive species to New Zealand. So anyway, they have to figure out what to do with these possums because they are attacking the native bird populations of New Zealand. They discovered that the fiber for these possums is actually really great for like yarn and textiles. Um, because I guess it has like a hollow core or something I didn't completely understand, but it, the possum fur is really soft, but apparently it also doesn't pill at all and is like, has a lot of the same really great properties that wool has, but it just is warm and soft and doesn't pill. Um, and it feels really good, which is really weird. Um, there's tons of sheep and wool and everything in New Zealand as well. So I saw a lot of wool and possum blends. I didn't, I don't know if I came across any yarn that was just possum fur, but I ended up getting some of this beautiful gray, uh, which is a 30% possum, 70% merino blend. I'll show you the color a little bit closer. Um, this brand is called Brush Tail, and I saw this a couple different places in New Zealand. It, um, seemed like a good a good representative possum yarn so I got six balls of this I kind of want to make like a cabled vest or something like something kind of cozy and warm this is the it's like a DK weight color weight is shale so yeah I have a little bag of that I have six balls of that and then also in Wanaka um, actually, someone messaged me on Instagram when I was in Wanaka and told me that they had previously been to Wanaka and stayed in an Airbnb and their Airbnb host made yarn and sold it at a shop in downtown Wanaka that wasn't like a yarn shop. It was just kind of like a, you know, I don't know, like mix and match kind of shop. And so she like recommended that I go there. I went there. I found the yarn. It was gorgeous and I had to get some. So um, there was a whole bunch of, well, not a whole bunch, but there was a couple different like colorways of this beautiful locally produced and hand spun yarn. And I had to get these two skeins of this gorgeous red. Um, it's so pretty. It is, I don't know if y'all can tell like the subtle like little blue flecks in there. It's just really, really pretty. So this is Merino and it is, the sheep are like locally, um, local sheep to Wanaka. And they, yeah, I guess they dyed the fiber and then it's hand spun as well. It's like locally milled and spun and everything. So gorgeous. I think that I may wind these up and take them on my next trip. I have... Um, I originally was thinking about making a, another kind of like collar type, dicky type thing, but now I'm thinking that this would be really nice in the Autumn Tales shawl by Ozetta, which is basically just like a giant shawl in garter stitch. I just think that the yarn is so beautiful that doing something kind of simple would be really nice because I get to completely like appreciate the yarn. So... That's what I'm kind of thinking of now, and I think that like a giant squishy garter stitch shawl will be really nice to take on the trip. Generally, I try to take lighter weight yarns. This is more probably like a worsted weight. So I may change my mind and take like a fingering weight shawl or something, but I don't know. I have... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have socks and um, my color tip tea is fingering weight as well. So it might be nice to have something a little bit heavier um, as well. So I got this. I'm in love with this. I'm so in love with this. So that was in Wanaka. And then basically in New Zealand, we just like made a loop around the South Island. Um, it was also in Wanaka. If you've seen on my Instagram or on our travel newsletter, we did this hike called Roy's Peak, which was absolutely killer, like grueling, insane, but also incredible, like some of the most beautiful views of our entire lives. And also there were sheep the entire way. Okay. Not the entire way, not at the very top, but like there were just sheep grazing 
and we got to like see a lot of them up close and they didn't seem bothered by us and so they were just kind of like hanging out and we saw so many sheep and it was amazing it was really cool so anyway that was also in Wanaka um okay after Wanaka let's see we looped around we went up to like the glaciers to like Fox Gla Glacier and like Franz Joseph um, we went through Arthur's Pass. We didn't really go to any yarn stores through there, I don't believe. And then we made our way back to Christchurch, like kind of looped around to Christchurch. We spent a day or two in Christchurch and I did end up going to um, a shop there that was called Wool Yarn and Fiber. And I got a couple things there. I didn't actually buy any yarn there, but I did buy some fiber there. So I bought some of this beautiful warm gray Polworth and I bought just 200 grams of it. It's in this bag. I'm not going to take it out but um, I don't know if you can see if the glare is too bad but it's just like a warm gray and the Polworth is from um, I guess it's from Canterbury which is um, near Christchurch. That's like the area that Christchurch is in. So that's cool. More like local sheep. I think, I don't remember if I have spun Polworth before, but maybe I haven't. Have I? I kind of think I haven't. So it'll be fun to try Polworth. Um, and I just thought this was a nice neutral gray that was really pretty. And then I bought this hand dyed braid that I'm so obsessed with. This is so pretty. It's just this like pale blue with some like red and darker blue and green specks on it. I don't know how this is going to spin up. I don't know what I'm going to use this for, but it was just so pretty that I had I had to grab some. So, well they just had this one they had one braid of this colorway, so I just grabbed this colorway, but really really pretty and I love this. And then I was not looking for fabric. Those of you that I've been following for a while may remember that I had kind of a falling out with sewing a while back. Maybe it's because I've had a good amount of time away, but I was starting to get the itch to sew again during this trip for some reason. And I think it's because I have a skirt that I sewed that I take on all my trips and I love so much. It's this orange floral skirt. Um, if you scroll back on my Instagram, I'm sure you can find it. I love this skirt. I wear it all the time when we're traveling. And I kind of was like, I want more. Like, I want more of this shape. And it was like one of my, probably my biggest sewing success. And it wasn't that difficult. So I actually didn't notice this, but, um, when we were at the yarn store near Christchurch, my husband was like, hey, there's a fabric store over there. Do you want to go in? And I was like, whoa, first of all, you get points for being very supportive and good partner. Um, what partner is like, hey, do you want to go to another craft shop? Uh, like that is just, he's an angel. But anyway, um, I also just haven't been sewing very much. And so I didn't even think to look for fabric stores or anything. Like I always, when I go to a place, I always look for the yarn stores. Um, but this fabric store that was there is literally called the fabric store. And it's, I think a quite big and popular fabric store. Um, I think I had actually been following them on Instagram, like following them online. Anyway, I went in there and they had so many beautiful fabrics, just really, really pretty fabrics. And so I found one that I really felt like I had to take home with me. So it is this. Oh, let me do a close-up so you can see it. It's just beautiful blue crepe with these like white flowers on it. And I just really loved it. So I bought, I think like three meters. And my plan is to make another skirt just like my orange one. But I think I'm going to have some extra fabric. So I may try to make a top as well to go with it. So I can have like a matching set. But also that's a little bit scary. Like I know I can make the skirt, but I don't know about the top. But anyway, um, 
my sewing machine is in our storage unit so this is not gonna happen anytime soon but eventually I will make hopefully a skirt with this. Part of me was like, oh, I would love to do that before our next trip because along with Scotland and Ireland, we're also going to Spain. I was like, doesn't this, I just feel like this would be really cute if I made this skirt and I wore it in Spain. But also, um, I feel like this would be cute with this sweater. Um, Maya pointed that out as well, that this would go really cute with my DRK Everyday sweater. So, cute. Um, we'll make someday. Okay, so that was Christchurch, and then the last place we went, um, well, I mean, we kept kind of going through the South Island, we made our way back to Queenstown, and well, I guess, yeah, it was in Queenstown, wasn't it? No, 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 we made our way back to Queenstown, we flew up to Auckland, um, which is on the North Island, and then we did, we did like a little day trip to Waiheke Island, which was so much fun, we loved that. But then back in Auckland, there was um, a yarn store there. Um, I'm forgetting the name right now and I'm very embarrassed. I should have, I should remember it. Lupine, I think. Yeah, Lupine. Um, loved that yarn store. The owner, she was so nice and I got to chat with her for a while. Just an incredible experience. That was so much fun. They had a great selection. I bought a couple of things from there too. So right when I walked in, I saw they had a little bit of Union Fiber. And Bonnie from Union Fiber is just the best. Her uh, her colors are gorgeous. She's really nice and sent me tons of recommendations for our time in New Zealand. She actually is a New Zealand dyer. Like she lives in New Zealand. Um, and she, so she had sent me a ton of recommendations and it's just been so nice. And um, I love her colors. I had gotten a couple of braids of fiber from her, um, actually from La Mercerie, um, who carries her fiber now. But I saw this and I just knew that I had to have it. It's so pretty. And the fiber itself, the fiber content is the How Nui, which is, I learned a little bit about from uh, the folks at Lupine, but it is a breed that only exists at this one farm in New Zealand. So the Haunui farm has bred these like Haunui sheep, which I think she said is a cross between Romney and Merino maybe? I don't remember exactly, but um, the fiber feels incredible and I really wanted to try it. I had actually reached out to see if I could go to the Haunui farm and like to the facility but they said that they are just like not really set up to do tours like that but I did get some beautiful Henry fiber that Bonnie dyed and it's gorgeous and I don't know what I'm gonna make with this could be kind of pretty with this I don't know maybe that'd be too much contrast I don't know but it's really pretty and I like it a lot so I got that braid and then I got another possum yarn to try this was a different brand um, it's called Ahuru, Ahuru from Happy Go Nitty, and this one is a 80% merino, 20% possum, but it feels really good, and it's just like a natural kind of grayish color. So I just got one skein, and I think I'll just make like a hat. This is kind of a similar color to my sweater right now, but I think I'll just make like a hat or something with it, but I just wanted to try, since the possum yarn is like so unique, and everything I just wanted to try two different possum yarns to get a little bit of a different feel so anyway that's it <laughs> um I got more than enough plenty of yarn and fiber that I brought home with me um and uh yeah <laughs> I love it all I can't wait to start working with it all I'm really accumulating quite a stash and it's making me a little queasy just how much yarn and fiber I have so but it's really tough especially when I go when I'm traveling and stuff I just I don't know my brain is just like you have to get it you'll never be back here it's so pretty you have to get it it's a, a memento from your trip it's like special you have to and so I just can't I can't not but 
it's good that I'm not buying any yarn outside of travels because that would just be way too much. Um, anyway, so that's my acquisitions. Uh, I'm really happy with everything I bought. There's nothing that I'm like, oh, I wish I hadn't got that. So yeah. And then first up on my needles, I think is probably just going to be this red shawl because I love this yarn so much and I think it'll be a great travel project so I'll probably wind these up soon and get those on the needles and yeah otherwise um if you want to know more about that trip I mean I'll just say right now it was incredible we loved Australia and New Zealand um my husband was actually born in Australia but had not ever been back so he his family moved away when he was two so he didn't remember it at all and he had never been back so this was his first time back and my first time ever being there like going there so that was a really cool experience too for that reason and then yeah we'd never been to New Zealand before we actually got to meet up with some friends there which was amazing and New Zealand was incredible and beautiful and oh my gosh we loved it we love both Australia and New Zealand this trip was really amazing and it was a longer one um most of our previous trips were like around three-ish weeks and this one was five weeks so it was a really long trip um and I was a little nervous about like getting burnt out from travel but and like being too tired at the end and having to skip stuff because we're not feeling well or um just like being ready to come home but I wasn't really feeling that at all I was still going strong both my husband and I were and we were just happy to be there I guess so yeah it was a great trip um we leave in two days and we are going first to Spain for about just under two weeks, I think like 12 or 13 days. And then from there, we are going to Scotland for about a week and Ireland for about a week, and then we'll be back. So that trip will be a little shorter than the one we, we just did. I think it's just over four weeks. Um, so I'll be back in about a month. And I'm really excited for this one. Um, I mean, I'm excited for all of our trips and they all have been great. I don't know why I was like covering my mouth. That's probably hard to read my lips. But um, anyway, as far as what I'm planning to bring on this trip knitting wise, I already mentioned I'm gonna bring the Aurelia pullover that I'm knitting for Maya. I'm gonna bring my color tip tee as like a second garment to work on if the cables are too much and also when I finish Aurelia and then hopefully I finish Aurelia and then I am also probably going to bring this red shawl and then I'm going to bring two sock projects as well so these are yarns that I got um a little while ago uh for this trip specifically so similar to the New Zealand yarn that I knit in New Zealand uh I also luckily a couple other yarn dyers were have done collections that are inspired by the places that we are going on this trip so i got a skein of uh spain yarn from explore knits and fibers this is barceloneta which is a beach in barcelona which we are going to go to and uh i just got one skein of the cashmere cavern sock which is an 80 percent superwash merino 10 percent cashmere 10 percent nylon um, I just wanted to do like a basic sock, although I feel like this is kind of very similar to my skin color. Um, but on my sock, like on my feet, it doesn't really matter. But anyway, I think I'm going to do like a little bit of a textured sock. Um, there's a couple Summerly Knits patterns that I think would be good for this. So I'll have to decide and then like wind this up. And then the other one I got is, this was just like a one-off that... Um, Red Door Fibers did for, um, I think it was like in collaboration with a Ballyhora collection. Anyway, um, this is inspired by the Old Man of Store in Scotland. And uh, we are also planning to do this hike. It's like a really gorgeous kind of on the west coast of Scotland, um, a really beautiful like cliff hike type picturesque by the sea um hike and that we have in our plans as well and so I had to get this sock set as well um which is 
so pretty and I love this little blue. I just think this blue is so pretty and I'm really, really excited for this too. So I'll bring both of these um, and then yeah, the shawl and the two garments, which I feel like is plenty since this one, this trip is a little shorter than the previous trip as well. I feel like that's plenty and I need to make sure I leave lots of room in my luggage because I know I'm going to be bringing back lots of goodies from this trip. I already have tons of yarn stores, excuse me, and um, and like mills and farm visits and stuff <laughs> planned for especially for Scotland and Ireland. I think we may pop into a yarn store here and here or there in Spain as well. Um, the way that my partner and I generally kind of break down we normally don't do this but for this travel period there's just been so much planning to do that like we kind of um he's responsible for planning Spain and I'm planning Scotland and Ireland and so I don't know a lot of I mean I know what's going on in Spain but I wasn't as actively involved in planning it um and so I have to tell him if there are like specific things that I want to do there um, and so I just haven't looked into it as much but so if y'all know of yarn stores or like yarn type yarn and fiber type things that I definitely need to hit in Spain. We're going to Madrid for a couple days to Barcelona and then we're also going down to Andalusia. So we're going to be in like Sevilla and Cordoba and Granada for like a few days as well. So if y'all know of anything in those areas, definitely let me know. And then also like I would love recommendations for Scotland and Ireland too. I have found some stuff there, but I am definitely open to recommendations there. I mean, we're kind of going all over in both Scotland and Ireland. We'll be in like the big cities, but we'll also be doing, I think both places we're doing like coastal stuff. So like Scotland, we're going to go to like the Isle of Skye and everything. And then in um, Ireland, we're going on the West Coast and we're doing um, like the Ring of Kerry and the Dingle Peninsula and the um, Wild Atlantic Way and everything. So anyway, really, really excited. We leave early in the morning on Thursday. So I still have tons to do before then. So I should probably wrap this up. But thank you so much for tuning in. I know that it's totally a different experience than this podcast was previously like doing it so much more infrequently and um like lots of travel talk and and everything so totally different than it used to be but I really appreciate y'all that have kind of stuck with me and I still really love sharing what I've been working on and all the goodies I found in my travels and yeah so um yeah I appreciate it thanks for tuning in and I will see y'all when I come back. So in a little bit over a month probably. So thanks again and I hope you do lots of knitting. Watch lots of baseball. Baseball season is going to start uh, before you know it while I'm gone on this next trip. We already have it planned. It's like okay this evening no plans on the calendar because we are sitting down and watching opening day. <laughs> um, luckily it's not too late for us. Um, time zone wise but anyway if you don't know what I'm talking about this used to kind of be a partially baseball podcast as well um I talked about baseball a lot I'm a huge baseball fan I used to work for the Mariners anyway I hope you do lots of knitting and watch lots of baseball and have a great week or month or however long it is until I talk to you again bye <laughs>